Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. Uh, some of you guys in the comment sections of uh, recent videos uh, requested that I do a little bit of a walkthrough of my skill tree and why I use the skills that I use. So, you know, today's video is for you and any of the newer uh, players that would like a quick, a quick little guide on, you know, how and when to use all of these skills that uh, have been uh, presented to us by the amazing game that is Shadow of War. Now, again, uh, I, I just want to say uh, this is just my build of the skills that I use. So it's definitely not perfect. It's not going to fit everybody. Everybody has a different play style. So you will definitely figure out your own once you start playing and, you know, as you go through the story mode and maybe even after, since this game does have a very nice uh, end game. Uh, so, you know, you can do a lot of fortress sieges and defenses, online conquest and stuff like that. So, again, uh, I'm just telling you uh, about my build and why I use the, the things that I use here. Uh, and it's mostly uh, up to your personal preference uh, what you're going to use uh, out of these skills. I'm just here to, you know, again, just give some maybe, uh, maybe some advice to the newer uh, players and some... Uh, maybe uh, returning players that are that are a bit confused by the game. So, uh, again, most of these, especially in the combat skill tree, will be up to your personal preference. Uh, but the one advice that, I'll, I, that I always give players, especially when they're just starting the game, is you should always, or, or, or almost always, unlock the main skills first and then worry about the upgrades later especially since most of, most of these skills will unlock the elven side missions where you uh, relive the memories of Celebrimbor which will also get you new skill points so you know you can just snowball them into just unlocking everything very very uh, early in the game so let's just get into the skill trees and why I use what I use here I'll, I'll tell you right now I'm very clumsy in combat I, I definitely take a lot more hits than I should I don't always block or parry or dodge a lot of the attacks that I really really should be able to I'm just very clumsy and you know get into fights very easily so that's why I use the Grim Resolve upgrade which uh, as you can see gives you damage it uh, gives you might each time you're damaged in combat so no, not only do you uh, not lose might you actually gain it each time they hit you especially uh, good for you know a lot of archers when there are a lot of archers around and you're just getting pelted with crossbows so yeah this is why I use the grim resolve other two are very good for you but you know you should definitely be uh, confident in your combat skills and how you use your uh, uh, might and attacks especially the fatal might as you can see here because it just resets your might each time after you take damage miss an attack or exit combat and i just really like to uh, enter combat with my might meter full which i usually uh, do by just brutalizing a couple of you know slaves or uh, basic grunts uh, here with the perfect counter i don't think you can actually make a mistake since all of th these three uh, upgrades are very very useful it just depends on your again on your play style so here you have the rain of arrows it replenishes one upshot very useful if you're doing a range build which again for this game there are some amazing and a lot of different builds and range builds uh, use this uh, ability or upgrade uh, when the enemy gets a little too close and you can just replenish your arrows without you know worrying much about uh, whether there are munitions around now mighty reversal is also very nice if you want to maximize your might uh, intake but uh, i mostly just flail around just bashing on every single uruk around me enough to get to the uh, first might meter uh, and uh, getting my elven light because as I think everybody who has ever seen any of my videos on Shadow 4 knows I use the Wrathgiver sword so yeah um, but the fatal counter is very good and the reason that I use this is because I do a lot of fortress sieges defenses online conquest and stuff like this and I really get uh, annoyed when the grunts keep inter interrupting me on ground finishers on captains that are, you know, holding uh, checkpoints. So this is this one is very good, and you will get much uh, um, through the grunts much uh, quicker and much easier, and you will actually kill the captain uh, very very soon. 
uh, as soon as you you know focus him down so uh, the next one critical strike is very good and again I mean you, sh you should just really be very confident in your combat skills which I am not because that's why I use reprisal and as you can see it, it increases your uh, critical strike chance uh, the lower your health is which Again, it uh, it does get a, a very very low when I'm playing, uh, but that's why I use mostly a lifesteal uh, build in the sense you know of the gems I use. Mostly life gems are on my weapons, which means that I get a life back, uh, health back on uh, any hits that I uh, when I use my dagger, sword, or bow. Now, unstoppable is very good. And also, again, it's it's very good uh, as long as you're confident you, that you can get uh, above uh, 20 hit streak and stay there, that you won't be taking a lot of unnecessary attacks. And the Elfin Precision one, I mean, th that's just for the patient ones. I like to button mash my attacks on the ground, so this one is definitely not for me. But, you know, again, per personal preference, you do you. Uh, uh, concerning the ground finisher and its three upgrades, I mostly use Fury, as you probably know for my, from my other videos. It does a lot more damage than just a regular ground finisher, concerning the captains, of course. The ground finisher, the regular ground finisher without any upgrades, will instantly kill any of the grunts, defenders, or berserkers, but this one does a lot more damage when you're fighting captains. Now, of course, it does get a bit uh, tricky using this one if there are a lot of enemies around, other enemies around. But, you know, you can always do a quick element light or stun, mass stun that, you know, gives you a bit of time to do your damage. Uh, Wrath Shield is, Wraith Shield is very, very good. Again, for doing the same thing, but you won't do as much damage. But you will definitely land all of your ground finishers on your captains that they are trying to kill. And Ground Drain is definitely very useful when trying to get back some uh, health during mid-combat. Uh, brutal Aggression, I'll be honest with you, I don't... Um, think you can actually make a mistake here either. Again, it just depends whether you're using your bow at all. As you can see, the this one is very, very broken, where you can chain executions to additional enemies, but does consume your focus. So again, if you're not playing on using your bow much, this is definitely for you. I do like using this though, since when my might meter is full, I actually have two abilities that I can use instead of the one. Uh, on the retaliation or last chance now this again is completely up to you I use this one since I, I again I'm very clumsy and I do get um, almost killed a lot so that means yeah I, I use any last chance attempt I can get so I, I do like having an extra one Ventful Drain is very good since you know you get full health as long as you make a perfect counter on the uh, retaliation and Burst of Might again this is if you're very confident in yourself that you can uh, actually counter all the other attacks and just want to maximize your damage output. Now, as for the Predator skills, uh, here, Elven Agility is, of course, I think the first uh, ability that the game actually forces you to upgrade, and it's very good, but I always use the Silent Runner. I do like using stealth, but uh, um, I also use the Waters of Lorien, which means Spectral Dash is really not that useful to me since the water sort of Lorien is the same thing just you know standing up so this means that you're actually silent and if you want to dash around you can always do that as well now here in the brutalize skill um i don't really use the brutalize uh, skill honestly to actually uh, make other grunts uh, run away in fear I mostly use it to get as much might as possible for my attacks and your know, damage output Which is why I use the unyielding ferocity. It actually does. I think one brutalize almost if not actually fills up one of my might meters, which is of course very, very useful. Now here, I actually didn't want to uh, waste any of my skill points using these three um, upgrades since, I'll be honest with you, Poison Tendril is a uh, skill that I use very often and it's extremely useful, but I use it to, you know, poison any grog barrels at distance and then shoot them with an arrow and just make a balefire explosion. These are if you're making some, if you like making traps and using a lot more stealth than I do. So again, these are very useful, but they're just not my cup of tea and I don't want to uh, lose any skill points in upgrading any of these if I'm not going to use them. Uh, Wraith Chain, I'll uh, say, is one of the most useful stealth upgrades, uh, skills, sorry, 
uh, available in the game. It's very nice since you can literally just clear out a small camp very easily uh, and you will get your focus back in like six or seven seconds. So it's very, very nice. And I like to use this because your first chain, as you see, as you can clearly see, your first chain stealth kills, uh, consumes no focus, which means you can actually kill more of the Uruks if there are any stragglers or even slaves nearby that could, could uh, raise the alarm and, you know, notify other Uruks. I don't want to disparage the monster hunter though, but that's again, depending on your playstyle and your fortresses. If you have a lot of beasts around, beasts around your fortresses and you like fighting them, this one is for you, but I just mostly use the Shadow Blade here. Uh, Deadly Spectre, I'll be honest with you, I almost never use this ability, so I haven't actually upgraded any of these. These are the Brutalize and Drain uh, ability upgrades for this ability. I mostly use this when, you know, I'm kind of bored and I just remember I can do this, but I don't generally use any of this. I just come in for the kill. Uh, the death threat uh, ability is extremely useful and I'll be honest with you the vow of violence I have never found to be useful to anybody so the death threat actually does uh, the um, level up the enemy captain and get you much better gear from him but I have not ever uh, seen any difference between using the vow of violence and just a regular death threat Worse than death, though, uh, you will get this upgrade after a certain point in uh, uh, in the story quests with uh, Bruce. This one will upgrade your uh, your death threat to actually, or sorry, your shame to actually uh, de level enemy Uruks from five levels to twelve levels, and it's extremely useful. But again, I only use this for special occasions for those especially irritating Uruks. So yeah, it's actually your choice. I mostly uh, keep it unupgraded here and you can just, uh, as you can see, turn it on and off as often as you want. Now about the ranged ones, again, you, you, it's mostly due to preference, but you can also upgrade any of them and just use these upgrades when uh, fighting different captains. So here you have the spider song. I like uh, poison damage, that's why I use this one. But the bursting arrow is very good for, you know, just uh, staying out of the fight and especially if you're doing, again, a ranged build. And the matron scent actually invites ghouls. Now, ghouls are kind of disgusting to me. I don't, I don't usually like calling them. Uh, and I very much like the poison damage. But again, you can use ghouls against uh, a captain, enemy captain that has you know, a fear of ghouls or something like that. I just mostly, you know, abuse other weaknesses that I have. Uh, the free spin is a very useful ability against the captains, especially the ones uh, with the fear uh, of pinning. Now here, Savage Ice, I usually mostly use this because Ologs are one of the most annoying enemies in the game for me. So I like, you know, just having the ability to stun them technically or root them or however, however you want to call it and just finish them before they have a chance to annihilate me with their big fucking clubs and destroy my might meter. Uh, you can also use deep freeze, you know, doubles the duration, but I found, you know, I just pin them for a few seconds at most and then I just wail on them either by freezing them and during a flurry of attacks or, you know, anything uh, else that I think of. So, yeah, I, I really don't think you anybody really needs dub, uh, double the duration of, of the uh, freeze since, again, you can really easily reach them and it's really not that, you know, complicated. Uh, the Brutal Cold, again, I told you, it's up to your playstyle, but I mostly don't want to scare away Uruks, I want to slaughter them, so uh, I'm not interested in them running away, I'm interested in using them to fill up my um, Might and Wrath meters. Uh, Birds of Prey, Bird of Prey is an amazing ability. I, I, I'll be honest though, I don't really utilize it as much as, much as I should. But the Talon Strike is very useful, especially when you're traversing a uh, large land and, of course, when you're just discovering the game and, you know, doing all the objectives, all the towers, the Shilob memories, Gondorian artifacts and stuff. It's very useful because you can cover a lot of ground with this. Just, you know, point your bow in a, <laughs> as much distance as possible and just, you know, Talon Strike over there. You don't have to, you know, uh, dominate any of the beasts or, and such. Also, with the Wrath Giver, this does actually give you not as much Wrath as uh, an Elven Lightwood, but it does give you a lot. So yeah, that's another very useful thing about this one. Eagle Sight, though, is very also very good. 
again, especially if you're doing a range build, since you know you get a lot more time while in the air, and focus is everything, absolutely everything. Um, okay, so these are only two. Okay, uh, Mikey shot. Again, you can not make, make an actual mistake here. I uh, usually, you know, swap between Venom, Freeze and Fire, but now I've mostly just been using Poison. You can uh, just upgrade all three of these and use them at various intervals, uh, depending on what you're fighting, what captains you're fighting and what their weaknesses are. So if a captain is, you know, immune to fire, you can always use poison either to damage him or even if he has, you know, a, a, a fear of poison, uh, it's it's amazing to just swap abilities and you can do this mid combat. So it's really fine. You can just upgrade all of these and again, just use uh, any of them whenever you get uh, uh, the idea. To, that it's most useful to you. Now Shadow Strike, I've upgraded all three of these because uh, all of them are almost equally uh, uh, useful. As you know, Shadow Strike is just teleporting to an enemy and pff, murdering them very brutally. I love the, the, the br brutalization of Uruks with the Shadow Strike. Now here we have the Chain of Shadows which is pretty much the, uh, here, which one, uh, Ra Wraith Chain of the ranged builds. Uh, you can just, you know, keep going and killing all the Uruks around, of course, at the cost of focus, but again, you know, you've just killed four or five Uruks and really cleared up a lot of the, of the enemies for yourself, uh, uh, very, like, almost instantly. Uh, Shadow Strike Pool is very useful, especially in online conquests and fortress sieges, siege, since you can just uh, climb up on the upper walls of the inside of the fortress and just pull the overlord to yourself and just one we one them uh, if you can away from all the other beasts, Olags, and Uruks. And I mostly use Shadow Diamondite because, well. I mentioned before that I'm a very clumsy fighter and this is a very nice chance to, you know, regain almost full health uh, in the middle of combat when I'm panicking and don't want to die. About the Wraith one, uh, I'll be honest with you, I have no idea which one of these is the strongest. I don't think, I don't really think there is a strongest upgrade for this. It's just mostly what you want to use and I almost never use throwing daggers. So Serrated Edge is fine but again i don't think anybody uses throwing daggers for their damage they mostly use them to uh, either ramp up their his streaks or just uh as you can see stun cc some uh, enemy grunts now i use swift barrage since it uh, you know as you can see it's very very quick and does a lot of cc instantly but you can also use rain of blades i know that talion uses it in the dlcs uh so i guess it's the uh, lore accurate <laughs> version for the game uh, is the lore accurate upgrade. Um, about the Elven Light, as you can see, I have some uh, upgrades for it, but I haven't upgraded anything of this because, again, I'm using the Wrathgiver Sword and the whole point of using it is using the unupgraded Elven Light to just instantly regain all of your wrath. If you want to use this sword and become the actual god of the game since you're pretty much indestructible with it, you will need to, you know, turn off any of the upgrades here, although they are very useful if you're using any other build, I will say that. Uh, the Ice Storm one, uh, again, up to personal preference, I like using Shower of Ice as it CCs the most grunts around me and, you know, lets me in peace to just annihilate any captains I'm currently focusing, but Frostbite is very cool, again, especially if you're one wee running uh, 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 an enemy captain since Again, it causes a critical strike, with, which does a lot of damage. And the Shattering Blow, I mean, that's for, you know, the terror playthroughs, where you just want to make a horror movie out of your game, I guess. Uh, the Consume skill, again, is ex extremely useful. Every player in history of Shadow of War knows this. I use the Chain of Souls. Uh, well, you know, I like uh, setting up my armies very, very early in the game, in the sense that... I like making an army out of the enemy army mid-combat and mostly use the Wrathgiver and Raise Dead abilities for this, but again, this actually replenishes your health and gives you uh, fighters 
at the expense of the enemy. So it's a, a very overpowered upgrade in my opinion. Again, you 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 don't really have an option of the mistake of making a mistake here since all of these upgrades are very good. Since again, consume increases wrath is very very good, and the Olog Lord. I mean, come on, everybody wants Olog uh, minions here. Now, Treasure Hunter, I mostly used uh, Discerning Eye when leveling, since, you know, again, it, it increases high, it increases uh, the chances of high quality gear drops from captains, and when you combine it with the uh, Death Threat, it really gives you a lot of very, very nice stuff, again, especially when leveling. Uh, the Mind Breaker is very nice if you get interrupted during your domination lot, which I really don't, since I mostly use uh, Shadow Consume, you know, with the ranged, so it's pretty instant. Or I CC everything around me and then dominate who I want. Uh, the Upgrade Prospector, this one I think is especially good, uh, uh, and especially so in the late game, since you will never stop farming gems in this game. Gems are used for so much stuff. Uh, if you've upgraded every gem and you have like a perfect gem in every one of your slots, you will still need to collect these gems in order to, you know, maybe re-roll the secondary bonuses on your gear. So this is a, a, an essential upgrade in the late game. I don't think you can, you can uh, uh, go wrong with choosing this one as soon as you can, though. Um, this one, the Raise Dead. Uh, that's again personal preference which army you want to raise I I love having the Olohai uh, um, minions around me especially if, if I've just slaughtered a lot of them some people like you know using Undying Beast since I mean it's mostly Karagors not really anybody I don't think anybody wants to raise ghouls from death but Karagors can be very useful and if you're fighting a feral uh, fort this is an insane and broken ability right here and of course the undying loyalty i just activate whenever i want to to revive a recently deceased captain of mine um about the mounted uh skills i i don't really think i have a lot to say uh, the upgrade pounds i've used i i think um once during uh an elven memory mission and that's pretty much it so yeah i don't really even fight much while mounted so I, i'll be honest with you any of these upgrades are fine since you know you will actually uh figure out which is the best upgrade for you and your play uh, play style while playing the game now the grab rider of course is very good but again upgrades are mostly irrelevant and i didn't want to use my skill points on them i've only have unlocked this one for the uh, for the completion of a mission, so these I really didn't want to just waste my skill points since, again, nobody really plays Shadow Fort in order to play Mounted on a Grog. The Dragon Rider, we'll, we'll talk about though, those are very good. Um, call Mount, again, this is uh, depending on which ones you prefer. When calling a Dire Cargor, it's very good, especially if there are uh, Wild Cargors around. Uh, if you're riding a Dire Caragor and there are uh, just regular wild Caragors around, it will dominate them for you, since Dire Caragor is like the alpha of the pack. Uh, the Growl Call is very good when using when fighting in fortresses, since uh, a lot of the captains have, you know, either a fear of Growls or they take very, very good damage from them. So this is a very useful upgrade that you, you definitely definitely don't want to miss. And of course, the dragon song, always, always choose riding a dragon anywhere. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Now, Shadow Mount, uh, I use Packmaster, since Shadow Mounting a broken Karagor will dominate other Karagors, and this applies to enemy Karagors as well. It doesn't matter if they're wild or not, they will all become yours, and it's really good, again, when playing against fortresses, because there are, there are a lot of Karagor riders, and, you know, the Karagors will just knock them off themselves and start fighting for you although this one is very good you know just in a pinch to restore your health and actually gain a mount uh here where you can just mount unbroken characters you don't have to do any damage to them which can get a little tricky i know especially if you're out of focus <laughs> and now for the dragon rider the only upgrade you should use is the scales of iron since the dragon does insane damage but they are very squishy they are a literal glass cannon in the game they get killed very easily and the scales of iron really really prolong their uh, health and usefulness in the game i i won't be 
you know, bashing this upgrade, but I mean, you can always check it out and, you know, bring your feedback in the comment section, but I don't think anybody ever uses this one. Now, as, now <laughs> we got to the last, the story upgrades tree, finally. I'm sorry if this video is taking a bit long, I'm just trying to give you as much information as possible. I have never found uh, anybody who uses anything other than domination here, since these are very good. Um, I, again, this one is for the ranged uh, build, this one is for the wrath, but I play with a wrath giver so it's fine and I don't really use that many arrows, so domination is just a, a no-brainer in this one. As for Iagloss, when you're using the Spectral Glaive of Gil-galad, uh, I found this one especially when you're using a Balefire Explosion build, which I hope I will get to very soon and share with you guys. Uh, this is an insane upgrade that, as you can see, allows you to just keep swinging and just knock down huge amounts of Uruks, uh, although this video really does not do uh, this upgrade much justice. Of course, Mighty Swing is very good, but again, you have to be really, really, uh, s sorry, patient and really uh, good at timing. And trust me, you're not going to be able to do this, especially when there are a lot of Uruks around, since they're always going to be attacking you, especially when charging your Glaive. Uh, for the Ring Wraith, now this is the ability that you get at the end of the game. This uh, replaces your Elven Rage one. Uh, I've found the Poison weapons are probably the best since a lot of the captains have, you know, uh, resistance to the flaming, uh, to resistance to fl uh, fire damage, sorry, brain, brain freeze. Um, but uh, yeah, the Poison weapons are very good since they stun and do a lot of damage over time to enemy grunts and captains. The Cursed Weapons are only... I don't think I actually saw anybody using this. They're good for, again, uh, doing... Uh, the Curse really affects you, and the Cursed Weapons mostly make enemy grunts uh, run away in fear, but I don't think anybody wants to do this. You always want to kill as many enemies as possible so you can raise them from the dead to fight for you. Now, the Shadow Strider one is an ability that I use very very often and i think i don't i think everybody does you know it's it's amazing you know uh, an amazing addition from shadow of war or shadow of mordor sorry uh because again you can transverse much more uh, terrain with the d double jump and i use the waters of lorian with my build because as you can see my mask of the undying here to the right gives me uh, an upgrade to this uh, upgrade which is I can use it without consuming focus. I can do this as much as possible and when I do it I have a 5% increase on melee and stealth damage which as you can probably figure out for yourself is pretty broken. So I can do this all day just go through the whole army nobody can even touch me and I'm upgrading my damage. So yeah, this is an amazing ability. I only upgrade this one for, again, for the side mission. Although I can see how some people, especially if you're uh, going to be recording some stuff for YouTube, some fancy kills, this can be useful, but I mean, Waters of Lorien is a knockout. The Hammer of Eregion is cool, but I mean, we used it in Shadow of Mordor and it's completely fine. You can always use just the regular freeze method. The Call Followers, I always use the Bodyguards. Uh, oh, sorry, the bodyguard captain, since they're probably the most broken things ever, especially if you find a very good legendary Uruk. Uh, Cluster of Spiders are very good for the poison damage and any enemy captain that has a fear of spiders, but they mo I mostly summon them by, you know, uh, destroying campfires. And uh, the Iron Guard is very good if the enemy has a fear of the undead. These are very good, but the captain is always much more useful. Now, for the Dominate uh, Captain skill, I use the Destroy Followers. I can be very annoyed with some of my captains, but again, if you're doing any of the uh, siege, sieges or defenses, you're probably gonna use the Enraged Followers. It's really insane how much damage your whole army does once you enrage them just once. I, I don't even think it consumes that much Wrath, but when you use it with Wrath Giver, it's just insane. So that should be it uh, for this video. This is my uh, little skill tree and why I use each of these skills. I'm very sorry for taking this long to finish up the video. I really hope I helped some of you guys 
And if um, you found this uh, information useful, uh, uh, please consider liking and maybe even subscribing to our channel. I hope to make much, uh, much more videos and about uh, many more games in the coming days, weeks and months. And thank you guys very much for watching. See you guys in the next one. Bye.